So that was a prelude from Walter Wyczynski's The August Collection, which is a collection of 24 preludes uh, by um, Walter Wyczynski, who's still alive today and lives in Toronto, used to teach at the University of Toronto. The reason I put this on the audition list is that it really shows me what people can do with time when technique is not too much of a factor. So uh, often with pieces, I find that technique and difficulty, uh, technical um, challenges, they often drive pulse, they drive timing. And I'm just curious to see what people can do when uh, it's uh, in a very skeletal, simple structure where they can really show how they feel time, how they feel articulation, how they feel phrasing. Um, it's marked with a bounce. So already that's telling me that there's some sort of swing. And I like to think of time in this piece and in many pieces as not a uh, stick that drops regularly, but as a circle, so that you feel bump, beep, bump, beep, bump, bum, bum, almost like you're turning the crank. And there's a couple of times where he marks a, a writ, or where it just feels like there's a little bit of a lift, just like a ball bouncing would have a little bit of lift to it. So um, for example, when you get to the poco writ and you're one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Tito. So that you really feel that this, the, the, the important thing is that um, when you're turning a crank, say, or when you're moving something, like swinging a ball around on a string, that it can slow down, but it can't slow down suddenly. That you really have to feel the circle going, and that there's moments of where the, it's coming down and it's just got a little swing to it, it's, it's going to accelerate a little bit more, and as it gets to the top, it slows down. Uh, and the other thing is that um, within that circle, you feel that the time never stops. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. So that you can, you can uh, just listen one more time and you can feel <laughs> Right? Um, so I really like a uh, time where people are feeling time in an organic way. I also really like what people do with articulation. And I should mention, I don't uh, expect people to do what I do. And, and in fact, every time I play this, I, can, I play it slightly differently. But what I want you to have is a sense of when he marks articulations, almost every note in this little tiny excerpt is articulated. When he marks those articulations, that you're taking them to mean something. Whatever it means. Uh, the staccato at the beginning can be very, very short. Or they could just be more of a swung staccato that just means sort of a lift. Right? Uh, but that every articulation is, is something that you have taken in and you've said, this is what I think it means. Oh. And that uh, every dynamic marking, it's not that you have to play like an objective mezzo forte or, you know, make sure that I really know you're doing that crescendo, but that you, you've taken that to mean a character or a certain way of playing and that it really informs your phrasing, your structure of the overall piece. And that uh, when I listen to it, uh, I guess ultimately it says with a bounce. I want to smile. <laughs> 